Have you ever felt stuck in life? Maybe you felt like you're moving, but you're not really going anywhere and everything around you looks and feels the same. Maybe your story even feels a bit aimless at times. All of us on the show have experienced this. And today, Nick is going to share insights from the film Stranger Than Paradise, along with reflections on identity and reauthoring as we wrestle with how to navigate life when it's become monotonous. Welcome to the Live a Meaningful Story podcast, where we learn how to navigate life one film at a time. We are four friends with backgrounds in storytelling, filmmaking, teaching, and narrative therapy. Join us on our quest towards telling and living our stories more meaningfully. I'm Derek Hatch. My name is Nick Nita. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Joseph Wilson. I'm Jason Lin. All right. So the last two episodes, you got to hear my story. And now we get to dive in with Nick because we had Star Wars, one of the most mainstream of all mainstream sci-fi fantasy epic. Oh, yeah. Now opposite. we're going the complete the other opposite way. direction, criterion, slice of life, black and white. Realism. Realism Ground level. You know, yeah, I didn't really weird. It didn't really dawn on me that it was black and white until like near the end of the movie, and I was like, "Oh, this thing has been in black and white." Because <laughs> <time." laughs> like, I, I wasn't even paying attention. I like, can't because yeah. it was really good. I can't understand that thought at all. Neither <laughs> can I. It was like the starkest. You didn't notice Glam. there was I no did. color. I'd be like, I think you're colorblind. Can I read the letterbox bio real yeah, quick yeah. for anyone who hasn't seen it? So if you haven't seen this movie, it is on HBO Max. You could watch it. But if you don't have HBO Max, you have to get the DVD. Yeah, you get the Criterion. Yep. Yeah. So we will go into spoilers for this movie. And so if you don't mind being spoiled, Nothing great. Happens, so. if this, <laughs> it is a very spoiler light movie. Yeah, nothing happens. They got right. the Infinity Stones at the end. <laughs> Like, we're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. I love this movie. <laughs> All right, here we go. Stranger Than Paradise, directed by Jim Jarmusch. Rootless Hungarian immigrant Willie, his pal Eddie, and visiting 16-year-old cousin Ava always manage to make the least of any situation. Whether aimlessly traversing the drab interiors and environs of New York City, Cleveland, or an anonymous Florida suburb. Maybe, Jason, can you tell us what the Florida suburb is? Maybe, Maybe you know. Yeah, you know about the slumps, the weird birds and flamingos. <laughs> so that was funny. <laughs> that was so cabbage palms. You see those all the time. Yeah, small one story houses that just the kind of of the wind and heat going. Yeah. The beach is there and weird people exist. Just come out of nowhere and then they disappear just as quickly. And you go, yeah. huh? And that's Florida. Uh, there's weird birds, there's alligators, there's cabbage palm trees, and really weird people. That and is that's my... like those are the four most important yeah. elements of Florida, and they hit it spot on. And I also think that the phrase "making the least of every situation" is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Did they say that in the movie? No, he said no. The letterbox yeah. description oh, says oh, that. Let really say yeah. <laughs> Let's make the least of this situation, guys. <laughs> No, the Florida Imagine man, the Florida man, about you. the Florida man is high key. That's my favorite oh my is this gosh. guy who just comes like, he's like in a different movie yeah. and he just comes out and he's just got, kind of, I think it's funny that like, even back then they were talking about like how Florida with alligators and stuff like that. I was like, is that just a staple? Of it must be. Yeah. Everyone's it's, perception. Of yeah. yeah. Alligators he's out there. <laughs> there's, they there's just there. be out there on the streets eating folks. It's, just sunshine. <laughs> it's just sunshine and alligators. Yeah. Yeah. Weird birds. An interesting yeah, contrast. Birds, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So Nick, Why'd you pick this movie? Let's start with that. This movie is like the introduction to my love for film, actually. Mm. I, huh. This was like a like a starting point or a liftoff. So I, I went to college in Rice, or in Texas at Rice, and I took a film class there, and this was one of the films that we watched, mm -hmm. and I just kind of fell in love with it. I really don't know why at the time. I think yeah. maybe because it was like an indie, unknown, black and white, weird film no one knows about, but there's definitely just a level of, I think, just charm. Like, yeah. it's just a really charming, like, it is like kind of boring, but really fun at the same time, and yeah. it's just unique in that way. And so from there, I, that's, I remember transferring and coming to Palm Beach Atlantic, and deciding on what I was going to major. And I was just like, well, if I'm going to go to school, then I might as well just do something that I love. And I yeah. pick film production. Yeah. And because of that, I didn't get a job out of college and <laughs> I started working at the breakers. And because of that, I'd start ended up at, you know, inner city ministry. And then yeah. because of that, 
here at this podcast talking about this film. I think completely this is a God thing, like a yeah. culmination of, yeah. you know, where he's been bringing me and what he's been teaching me. Yeah. So this is like at the heart of, I had like, like a hundred stacks of DVDs in college. <laughs> Everyone came to my dorm to watch movies. Like I yeah. had them all. And this, this and another one is what I kept. So this is like just special to me. Yeah. So it's cool in that way. And then as I've kind of grown and tried to understand life and, and tried to mature and I've been brought back to this film. Yeah. And it's just been, you know, interesting how it's, it's come a full circle. So yeah, that's why I picked it. I knew instantly when you said origin story, this was the film. There was no other film Yeah, yeah, for me. So. Yeah, so these films that connect with our origin story with, again, those three questions, who am I, where do I come from, and why Why am I here, mm -hmm. you know? And those questions are asked over and over in this film. Yes, like, Mostly, yeah. why am I here, what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. And implicitly, who am I, and what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so there's a lot of those comments that are just, they're kind of just thrown out there, but there's a lot behind them, like when you hear them. Now, I think for all three of us, this was the first time we had seen this film, right? Yeah, or heard of it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I got to watch it with you and it was cool to like watch you as I watched the film, mm -hmm. you know, because I love people watching when I watch movies and seeing how they react to certain things. And you really just, I could just tell this was special to you yeah, and this, cool. you really lit up watching it. And I really enjoyed it. Like this is one of my favorite recommendations you've ever given me. Because I just, there was so much high praise. humanity. High, high praise. Yeah. yeah, there was so much humanity and it was just such a simple story. I was going to say that and, there was such simplicity to it, but yeah. it's still just really, mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was kind of like Dead Man where it just caught me by surprise at how much I was enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So, and it's the same person as Dead Man, if you guys don't oh, know. Okay. So, if that explains anything or not. Dead Man. That but, makes um, so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't, like, I'm just picking films as yeah. we're doing it. Yeah. And yeah. it's interesting how the films get brought up and what brings to the podcast. And, right. Because we've seen thousands of films and I picked these two. So, yeah, it's it cool. is. No, it yeah. is interesting. What were some things that really stood out to you guys as, as you were watching it? I guess like the cousin aspect, because like, I kind of grew up with some like cousins and they would part from time. We would come back together. Yeah. It's just like the simple every day to think like things in this movie. Like you're just watching, staying up, watching cartoons mm -hmm. with your cousin or something like that. You're, you're, you're annoyed by them. But then when they leave, it's like, dang, you know, you, you, you want to come back and hang out. Yeah. You know, I can try to go <laughs> well, to your state, you know, yeah. maybe, try to hang out. maybe I'll see you again sometime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's maybe. Almost, maybe. <laughs> it's almost like Willie is taking Ava into like, almost like an initiation into America or at least what he believes America is. Yeah. So there's like, he's trying to teach her about football. Yeah. He's just uh -huh. like, I, I don't know how to explain it to you. I just, I just just shut up. I'm trying to watch the game. Yep. They watch, <laughs> they watch Westerns, you know, reading the paper, com reading comic books, cigarettes, uh, TV cigarettes, TV. cartoon, shopping. Yep. Gambling. I'm like, this is like the most American thing. And it's almost like an initiation, like into it. Yeah. And Willie, like really trying to hold on to this American identity that, cause he's, he does not like the Hungarian side yeah. of who he is. Like, mm -hmm. he's like, don't speak to me in Hungarian. Right. He's very disconnected with that part of himself. Yeah. But it's interesting how like, he's trying to like really, really hammer home that he's American. He's disconnected, but he's not disrespectful of his heritage. Cause even when he goes yeah. back to his auntie, he's still like, he's still yes. I'm like, okay, go ahead and drink the soup. Yeah. Don't, man, yeah. eat your soup. Yeah. Eat the soup. I'm going to like, I'm going to eat this food for, you know, yeah. that the auntie made and stuff and kind of speaks to it, like understanding and not saying auntie talk in, like speak in English. Don't speak in. Uh, right, yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. She's, and he's listening to her in Hungarian and he's speaking English. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't interrupt her and like, right. it's still fluent. And you yeah. really get the sense of how, how much he really is Hungarian yeah. and right. how he was brought up and how he was raised and what he understands. Yeah. She's my favorite character. With the I win. Auntie. Yeah. 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 I oh, win she's again. Awesome. She is hilarious. But it's interesting because there's also this sense of lostness. They're not like lost, lost, like in terms of like they can't find where they're going. You know, they tend to have a sense of like, oh, like I need to go here. We're going to go find, you know, my aunt's house, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go to like, it's more of that lostness of like, what are we doing? Yeah. What? I mean, I, there's literally, a, a, I wrote this down. There's literally a line that's, we're not doing anything. Yeah. What are we doing here? 
there's just this sense of like loneliness and wandering and meandering. I mean, Eddie's just along for the ride. Yeah. He's just Eddie's like, clueless, he's just They're clueless so and oblivious about everything. But Willie just kind of has this like, what are we doing? Well, Willie's the one kind of driving it or driving yeah. something. Yeah. Right, and Eddie's right. going along for like with them. Yeah. But neither one of them really knows where they're going. I think they're just outrageously completely lost. I yeah. think they have no sense of anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I like when they're on the couch at, at Lottie's house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Eddie's like, we're in Cleveland. Let's go to a, a Cavs game. And he's like, we're just, we're in Cleveland just sitting on the couch. <laughs> <doing that." laughs> it's like, we're on this road trip and we're doing the same thing we were doing in New York. Yeah, yeah. Like, what think, are we supposed to be doing? It was it was Eddie yeah. who said that, right? Eddie. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think at the end, one of them said that like it's like what I just noticed from going to different states. Like it's pretty much just the same thing everywhere. That you yeah, get. Eddie says yeah. that too. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's like the 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 heart of the film. I yeah. think they're in. I think they're in Cleveland, walking in the snow on the train track, mm-hmm. and Eddie's like, you know, Willie, it's funny. You go somewhere new and everything looks just the same. Yeah. yeah. And was, New yeah. York is black and white and snowing and Cleveland's black and white and, and snowing. snowing. Yeah. Florida's black and white and snowing. <laughs> <laughs> Not snowing, but it's yeah, black it's, and white. Yeah, it's windy. Yeah. It just, they all look, the film, yeah. the visual language of the, the film, same. that black and white's important. Right. Uh, because it, it, it like suffocates everything. Yeah. yeah. And it's connected to something much deeper. Yeah. Mood yeah. is the same everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They go. It's interesting because you kind of see that everything looks the same. Like no matter where they go, they're the same, right? They just, they fall into the same routine. When they meet Ava in Cleveland, Mm -hmm. I find it hilarious that she's working in a hot dog place. And I'm just like, oh, that Americanism has kind of rubbed off on her, right? And she's like embracing that American identity. And I I don't know, uh, let me ask you something. Do do you think that, in Ava's perspective, though, everything looks the same. No, I think Ava is different than the other two. I think so, too. Yeah, Ava is free. Yeah. yeah. And Ava is able to embrace America. She, she has yeah. an aim, yeah. right, of where, where she's going. Well, and- she has a... I don't know if it's an aim because the, the, she she's following Willie and she's, she's getting frustrated because she's getting lost and she doesn't yeah. want to mm-hmm. be lost. Mm-hmm. So I think she has a clear desire or... Yeah just a, a, a freer ability to move. Yeah. So she can, she can enter into that hot dog stand, but I don't think she's taking apart that identity because she says it sucks here. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. like, she, I don't like it here either, but yeah. yeah. And she's ready to move and she can move instantly. Yeah. yeah. When she, she brings that on a plane and just like, was and just left right. immediately after she got some money. Like when, and when, the thing with Ava also is in the beginning, she's able to leave the house and, yep. and just, just make it. Yeah. Right. She doesn't struggle. Right. And Willie and Eddie are gambling and playing poker and I don't even yeah. know if they have jobs. We don't really know anything <laughs> yeah. about them. Yeah. <laughs> They're just survives. <laughs> Well, she's bringing she's bringing that boombox with her wherever she goes, and she puts that song on. And you know, when I talk about music, and I do like the soundtrack of your life and different things like that with people, music is part of like identity, right? Cultural identity, you know, like all those different things. And so, like when she's bringing a song with her, I'm like, oh, like wherever she goes, she makes herself at home, right? Mm. She brings that part of herself there and puts it out there, and that's why she can be free. Yeah. And Willie's always like, turn that off. I don't like this. Yeah. Like he's there's in resistance. De- there's yeah. there's resistance to it. And she's like, no, like I like it. And she just that's how she feels free. Yeah. Well, there's a confidence because she knows who she is. Mm-hmm. And that's why she's not lost like them, like you're saying. Right. She she's just that's ugly. I don't like that. Yeah. Is there a Kung Fu movie on? I want to see Kung, Kung, Kung Fu, movie, yeah. Which is mm-hmm. cool because that's another part of the, you know, the American thing. Right, like, right. I like that. I don't like this. I do like that. I wouldn't wear something like that. And she just throws the dress on the dress. Bro, track. that is the funniest and saddest thing. <laughs> hey, you, see, you see the dress I got her? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love that. Yeah. She just throws the dress, doesn't even care. But yeah, she's like, we didn't even know she was 16. Because that character is just so strong. Mm. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. Well, and when, in Florida, when they get down to Florida, it was interesting because she buys a hat, right? And I'm like, oh, she's doing it again. Like, she's finding something that makes her feel at home there. Mm-hmm. And 
she's basically rewarded. That's kind of like what the yeah. story is showing, right? Like whenever Ava is acting within her identity and living for, she's rewarded. That's why this random guy, she puts on this hat that coincidentally looks like the hat of some drug per dealer, right? Yeah. That they're supposed to meet up with. Right out. And then that. she gets like, the guy comes <laughs> up and just gives her all this money. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like you tell the my and part of this no more. Like <laughs> I'm done. And I'm Frank, done. I'm out. <laughs> See you. Goodbye. And it's funny because when uh -huh. when Eddie no not Eddie when Willie is playing the card game and he's losing yeah mm -hmm, he's just mm -hmm. playing with himself too yeah uh, just playing the game yeah by himself oh, and he's losing yeah and solitary she go he's like I've been losing all day and she goes yeah I've been winning all afternoon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep it's almost like you get to see through those choices, like what their identity, like what it's in and what is it that allows them to live free and what doesn't. So like when they're in Florida, they go to the, the dog races. The, well, they go at first, don't they go horse racing first? No, no, dog, they go dog, dog racing, racing first. Horse, and then, oh, yeah. so they do something that's out of character. And, and it's interesting because Eddie's so calm. He's like, I got a good feeling about this. Mm -hmm. And Willie's like, I told you like, and it's interesting because Willie has a sense of like, no, that's not it. Yeah. You know that that's not it. And then it's when they go to horse racing, that's it for them. That mm -hmm. that's something that they horses. like. Yeah. Th there's a passion. There's a, something they're knowledgeable about. Like yeah. something comes out through that and then they're rewarded for that. Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing that I also liked too, a lot was the long stretches of silence and yeah. how I just stayed. And there's some that I just, like, I think the first or second time I did that, I just started laughing because thinking this, yeah, this is life right it here. It literally is life. When, when a Ava leaves and Eddie and Willie are just sitting on the couch and they have beers and they're just, they're not saying anything. They're just sitting and you feel the kind of the heaviness of it, mm -hmm. but yeah. the, just the familiarity I'm like well, this this is what my life looks like because a lot of times we want movies that are grander or bigger than yeah. our own lives, and you're like yeah, my life okay, whatever. But when I watch this, I'm like yeah, that's that's what my life looks like. Why could how could I hate that if that's what I do almost every day with my friends? Like yeah. that's what it looks like. And there's not like it's a bad thing. It's there's a peace and just we're just here in this moment. Yeah, and how they focus on the moments when they're looking over at the lake. And it's mm -hmm. just windy and, and snowy, and uh, I think Ava and Willie are looking over, and Eddie is just kind of everywhere, or it's one of the guys that's just, like, looking around. And, yeah. You know, looking back at, behind the lake and looking forward. Yeah. And just, like, doesn't know how to 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 be in the moment, doesn't know how to, like, where where his position is. I just thought, think those moments are really cool. Yeah. And the, in the movie theater was really funny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where, where they're sitting and, and the guy who was thinking he was taking Ava on a date just all the way at the end. Yeah. And then Eddie just inserted himself between them yep. and he's like, like take yeah, the the guy's from him. He's the giant like fistful of popcorn. I would have snacked That's such a away. long shot. We're watching, oh, yeah. we're like watching two movie. or three <laughs> minutes uh -huh. of them just watching and we hear the, the Kung Fu noises in the back. I'm like, yeah. geez. But, but but that's that's super real. Like yeah. that's yeah. what it's like to watch a movie. And we're gonna we're gonna sit on this and just take this in. There is yeah, this, just this snippet of real life. And then at the end, when he's like, "Hey, man, thanks for buying all our tickets." <laughs> yeah, there is <laughs> an a, authenticity in this movie that yeah. is just dripping out in every scene. Now, what did you guys when you watched it initially? What did you guys think of the ending? It's it caught me off guard because I'm like, it, me too. Oh, it, it ended like this. They're just gone. There's no other way. I, they're, they're, I, they weren't doing anything. There's nothing to even yeah. conclude. Out loud, I went, "What?" <laughs> Those are my favorite endings, though. Sorry. See, I I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've noticed. <laughs> Lou and cool. Davis laying on the, getting punched in the face. Oh, it's Again. it's a not. It doesn't have a definitive like. It, it's a. It resonates at a level where it makes you reflect. It makes you mm. think. Like, yeah. What did I watch and why did I watch this? Is this it's just cool? A, it's more of. I think what I find most interesting, at least from my story, is that reflects more of an emotion of an everyday. Yeah. Like sense of being and for films i found that connection yeah because with people it was always hard for me just my my personal story with my family breaking up mm -hmm. that kind of foundation yeah i never had and so there was always this sense of being on the outside yeah and trying to find something 
yeah. that's what they're experiencing in the whole movie. I, I look at it differently because I don't feel like they're good, like, pieces of life. I've, like, Willie and Eddie in the room sitting there. And he's just drinking a beer. They are lonely. Yeah. yeah. They are yeah. Not it's a heavy con- moment. They yeah. are not connected. They're not connected to themselves. They're not connected to each other. And they're not connected to the reality around them. Yeah. And that is an experience that I brought with me for so long and mm-hmm. trying to break out of that into some form of union. Yeah. That overall expression. I like movies like that because yeah. that was that enabled me to kind of kind of connect to my emotions. Mm. Yeah. I was able to connect with something in these stories where I didn't get it so much from other people. Yeah. And so when films are like that, I kind of go to those kinds of stories instead of like, you know, I, I do like science fiction a lot, actually like science fiction and slice of life are my favorite, but the fantasy, the, where it's like this superhero or mythical figure and yeah. saves the day. I, it, at least it was never introduced to me. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to go to feel something. Yeah. And these kinds of stories helped me feel. And so yeah. the, the open-ended stories were my favorite because yeah. it made me reflect even more and, and search for, I don't think it was necessarily meaning. I think it was truth for me to yeah. search for truth. Yeah. Which is similar. Very, very similar. Yeah. Oh, of course. They're definitely interlinked. And yeah. in thinking about this movie, and thinking about how it ends, because I've been wrestling with like that line when everything looks the same. Mm-hmm. And you have Willie that gets on the plane thinking he's going after Ava. And then you find out Ava's not on the plane. Willie still went on the plane. And you're just kind of like, oh, what? Like, what happened? But, you know, I, I the more I thought about it, the more I realized how brilliant the ending is. Because now Willie has to go back to Hungary. Mm-hmm. He has to confront those parts of himself. He has to connect. He has to learn to reconnect with them. Right. Yeah. And I think like when everything looks the same, I think Hungary is going to push him out of that. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what really sticks with me in this story is this idea that when everything looks the same, it's time to, it's time for another story. It's time for a different story. And I think they're trying to find that. They go to Cleveland. I think Willie's aware of that. I think he goes to Cleveland, but he falls into the same patterns. Mm -hmm. He goes to Florida. He also falls in the same patterns, but I also think he gets a little taste of something. And I think he gets it in Cleveland. I think he gets a taste of this connection with his aunt, right? Or his grandma, Mm -hmm. um, um, his aunt. And he gets a taste of the connection with uh, Ava. Then he gets a taste in Florida of that connection of losing something and finding it again. And then he's going to go to Hungary. And I think the story's going to continue. I was just thinking this movie feels more like a stepping off. Yeah. uh, Before his actual journey begins. Yes, yes, yes. I was thinking it almost seems like the call to adventure is at the end. Yes, yes. That's a good way to put it. The prelude to the call to adventure. And then the call to adventure starts when the movie ends. Yeah. 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 It's brilliant. This is the origin story. Like like this is like this would be before Luke meets the droids in Star Wars. Yes, everything leading up to it. This is the low before this is Rogue One. Yeah. So then what what do you guys think is the next step for Ava and and Eddie? Mm. So where their, where their Ava's, stories in? Ava's free. Yeah. She's fine. Ava's got I a think whole she'll bag be okay. Money. Yeah. Ava can handle herself and she's ready to I th- live. Yeah. I think Ava's she's found next paradise. step maybe to actually yeah. let people in truly like allowing those true emotional connections, but I think yeah. Eddie is like actually finding his purpose without Having to Without follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They had to separate. Because yeah, now Eddie's alone in New York and now Eddie's like, well, now what? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good for them to separate because yeah. as good as friends they were, they just kind of fell into the same patterns. And yeah. I think that's true of life is when everything looks the same, sometimes we have to go. Right. Mm-hmm. And I identified so much with that. Like when I moved to Florida, because I have friends that I still like connect with in California. Mm-hmm. Some of them, like I love them, but every time I'm with them, if we fall back into the same stuff, same conversations, same, same things we used to do, yeah. right? There's nothing that's moved forward. And, but that's not true of all of them. Cause I know some of you are listening and that's, if, if you're listening, that's not you. And I'm um, trying to bring my people out here. You yeah. Know, you know who. Yeah. (laughs) But I think that's the interesting thing is when I came to Florida, there was a sense of freedom because everything didn't look the same. Yeah. And then I started to realize a new story was possible. And so like that is exciting. It's scary 
but it's also exciting yeah. when you start to realize that. And I think that's the journey Willie goes on. I think it's a journey we all have to go on, you know? It's what we call reauthoring our lives. It's recognizing that we have opportunities to move forward and to go deeper into parts of our identity that maybe we were neglecting or, or not connecting with. And that's going to be a lot of what our next episode's about. But how do we challenge ourselves to aim at something higher than where we've been? What's the next thing? What's the next step that we have to take in order for things to not look the same, to be the same, to feel the same? And that's uncomfortable. It pushes us out of our comfort zone. But that's where the story really gets started. And even though we don't get to see that for Willie, Mm -hmm. I'm excited for Willie. I'm excited for where he's going to go. Yeah, and I'm thinking when right now about Eddie. So there's parts of our ourselves that we that are holding us back that we do need to confront. And I think for Eddie that comes in a conversation between him and Willie. Yeah. The the hint that you know Eddie's not completely a hundred percent okay with some parts of their friendship, and he goes, mm, you know, yeah. why are you always telling me what to do? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then Willie goes because I feel like if I didn't tell you anything, you wouldn't do anything at all. <laughs> and so. There's a lack of initiative maybe in Eddie that mm-hmm. he's not going and and choosing his own life for himself. Mm-hmm. It's all dependent on Willie and or yeah, Willie and now that Willie's gone, Eddie has to go and he has to confront who he is, his identity, what he wants to do. Right. And that's where his like like they need to be separate and then maybe they're even better able to connect after right. that. And it's funny because Ava actually is pretty distraught at the end of this. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because she really, despite how she acted, she really wanted, she really enjoyed like her friends and her connection. Yeah. yeah she came out here on her own, but when, and we'll probably talk about this more on the next podcast yeah. episode, but when she leaves Willie's house for the first time to go to Cleveland and he says, Hey, maybe, uh, maybe I'll see you again. And she goes, yeah, maybe. But when they get to the hot dog stand, she's, she's over the moon. Just yeah. she's like, yeah. Oh my gosh, Willie Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good to see you. And, and there she wants that and yeah. she is free and she knows who she is, but she still wants a community. She still wants friends. She yeah. still wants yeah. enjoyment. She loves being with them. It's, it's apparent. And when they come back and bring her to Florida, she's mm-hmm. like, yes. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much for kidnapping me. And she has fun. It's awesome. Yeah. I think the only reason why she left was because they weren't including her in the stuff because mm-hmm. they kept leaving her in the hotel. Yeah. Um, Willie kept leaving her in the room all the time. Just stay here. Just don't, don't go anywhere. Don't yeah. do anything. It, so she probably just felt trapped, but she went back to them. Yeah. She went back to go get them and they were gone. Yeah. And then she's, missing them and she's you know she missed that connection with them and that's why she's like she's back at the same hotel or motel whatever you want to call Mm -hmm. it she lies on the bed with a hat and you know at the end of the day she's like you know what i i don't want to go somewhere else this is what i want yeah Yeah, that was her journey right realizing what she wanted yeah that's good nick anything you want to kind of tease out for the next episode uh, that we're going to talk about the word that I feel in this movie is is like the theme is like connection. Yeah. Right. It's it's connecting with ourself, it's connecting with other people, and it's connecting with the world around us. And so the ways to find connection have been really fascinating for me yeah. in my journey and what I'm learning right now. And and the black and white aspect of the film, yeah, I think is awesome because this idea of black and white thinking, dualistic thinking and yeah. And the ability to hold good and bad at the same time, or really even understand that there is no bad, that it's all just good, helps us to connect truly to really just creation and then everyone else. And so that's that's what I've learned as I've rewatched this, that this is really a deeply metaphysical film. And it's not intended to be that way, but for my life, it's a very metaphysical film for me. So. And if you're in a place right now where everything looks the same and you want to experience something that can wake you up, then check out our Live a Meaningful Story coaching program. Yeah, I got the book here today, right? There it is. And so we can do this as either one-on-one coaching or a workshop or a series of workshops. But what, what my clients really testify in is how this helps them prepare for the next chapter in their life story. 
and how it helps them find that sense of direction in where they're going. And I believe it could do the same for you. So all you have to do is go to allthingsnarrative.com, link in the show notes. You can learn more about this program, sign up for a free consultation, and we'll be back here next week to dive deeper into Nick's story, how it connects more with Stranger Than Paradise, and how it reveals opportunities for us to better connect with ourselves and the world around us. Thank you so much, and we hope you will join us for that. Thank you for listening to the Live a Meaningful Story podcast produced by All Things Narrative. If you'd like to learn more about our coaching, workshops, events, please check out allthingsnarrative.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at All Things Narrative. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and tune in next time as we continue exploring the stories we